Hallelujah. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. I hope and pray that you are having an amazing week. And although it is only Wednesday, God has done something tremendous in your life. I mean, your spiritual life, maybe in your soul or in your world, God is just showing up and he's showing out and some amazing things are happening. That is my prayer for you in Jesus name. Welcome to Wednesday midweek service here at Soul Restoration Ministry. A place where I believe your inner man is what? Revived. The essence of everything that we do at this church is to make sure that your inner man wax what? Stronger and stronger and stronger. Remember what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Okay, the moment you get born again, your inner man is what? Renewed. Your inner man is what? Renewed. And you have to believe that in faith in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Well, hey, listen. Time is flying. Can you believe that we are almost to the half point of the year? I mean, it feels like it was just a few days ago when we started 2022 and we were talking about exploits, the year of exploits and the year of exploits. And we're almost halfway there. So I believe and I pray and I hope that you're doing exploits for God in your own unique way and you're getting stronger in love. Somebody say amen. So why don't we pray and we'll get started into the word, okay? Father, we thank you so much for this evening. We pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, your word, your word, your word, your word, you will open our eyes so we may behold wondrous things in your word this specific um, evening and learn from your spirit in Jesus' name, amen. So last time, last Wednesday, as I was sharing with you all, uh, we're talking about the, the the topic of sin. We're talking about the topic of sin. And we talked about how this month, coming up in the month of July, okay, we are going to have our sit fast, our sin, iniquity, transgression fast, where we believe God to purify us from a deep place. All right? And we've talked about what sin is. It is just missing the mark. Okay, we've talked about what transgression is. It's when you break some kind of law. And iniquity is when perverseness sets in. It happens. You know, the thing that I love about God, and, and this is something that always touches my heart. He is a holy God. He is light. All right? And he is so honest. This, this is the thing that baffles me about God, that he is so honest that even at the beginning point, when he created mankind, he still said mankind, okay, please be careful not to touch this thing. Otherwise, on the day that you touch this thing, you will surely what die. Which means even God there is acknowledging that you know what? Man has a tendency to be what? Frail. Are you understanding what I'm trying to tell you here? So when the Bible says, okay, that Jesus Christ died on the cross since the foundations of the world, that means God was making provision for what he knew could happen if man went ahead and disobeyed him. As a result of it, we know what the Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. For all have missed the mark. Sin is missed the mark. And here we are. Okay. Now, uh, one of the things that blew my mind was how the Lucifer, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, could go from the son of the morning to become who he was. And if you remember when I was sharing with you towards the end of last week's message, okay, it was this, that he was beautiful. He had all sorts of honors, topaz, diamond, gold, silver. He has all sorts of jewels going to sapphire. He had all these things going on within him. And I think that the devil, when he saw how beautiful he was, just it, 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 it just flat out, it just got into his head. Okay. The combination of such good ingredients it finally became something that blew him up because he just didn't combine it right. God is doing some good things in your life. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, you will not let the wrong combination of the good things that God is doing in your life cause you to blow up like the devil did. Don't do it. Don't do it. What I'm saying is something that a lot of people will probably say it would never happen to me, but it happens. I have seen people, when they had nothing, be so faithful to God. When maybe they were believing God for that job when they were believing God for that wife, when they were believing God for that husband, they were believing God for that car, they were believing God for a bigger bank account, they were believing God for a shoe, clothes, whatever it is. 
God began to just bless them and bless them and bless them and bless them and bless them. And And over time, the combination of those very blessings that God gave them made them forget God. It can happen. May that be your story in Jesus' name. So what I want to do is I want to look at Ezekiel chapter 16. And I want to share a love story with you. I also want to share a love story that went from rags to preeminence and then sort of went back to rags again and and and, and led into some kind of redemption okay i'm going to use the message bible this time because i think it's just an easier read please uh, if you want to follow along as you read basically the king james that's fine but the message bible is just an easier read based on the story and the points that i want to make all right so please get your bibles if you need to basically convert your cell phone from the kgv to the msg i'll give you one second to do that so that we can get started in in what it is that i have to share but let's just go into ezekiel chapter 16 and see what god wants to do here so the bible says in ezekiel chapter 16 okay the prophet prophesying god's message came to me son of man confront jerusalem with her outreaches violations say this the message of god the master to jerusalem listen to this you were born and bred amongst Canaanites. Your father was an Amorite and your mother was a Hittite. Now, I love what the Bible does from verse 4. Okay, It's going to describe how they began their relationship and what transpired. It, it is very poetic. It is very, it is very, 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 very uh, romantic. And I want you to read it within that genre. So he says on verse 4, Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 4. On the day you were born... Your umbilical cord was not cut. You weren't bathed and cleaned up. You weren't rubbed with salt. You weren't wrapped in a baby blanket. No one cared a fig for you. No one did one thing to care for you tenderly in these ways. You were thrown out into a vacant lot and left there, dirty and unwashed. A newborn nobody wanted. This is how the relationship between God and the nation of Israel started. They were discarded and um, things didn't look good. And God said, you know what, I'll step in. So I want you to just imagine that a little baby, infant baby that was born, that is this vulnerable. All right. So some of us, God came into our lives when we were like this. I mean, you had nothing going on. Listen, your spirit was famished. Your spirit was what? Famished. You had no clue what state you were in. Your spirit was famished when God came into the situation here. All right? But I love God because God says, I will go from what? Glory to glory. And the steps of the righteous are going from what? Brighter to brighter. So maybe this is your spirit. Your spirit is in this state that when God met you spiritually, you were just this famished. Now, let's go to verse 7. Verse 6. And then I, I being God, came by. I saw you all miserable and bloody. Yes, I said to you, lying in there helpless and in filthy, live, live. I've come so that you might have what life and life more abundantly. So you are there and then all of a sudden your spirit, you realize that you are a sinner. You need to get born again. You realize that you need this Jesus. You need to restore your relationship with God. Well, God stops by and he says what? Live. And then it goes on to say, Grow up like a plant in the field. And you did. You grew up. You grew tall and matured as a woman, fully breasted, with flowing hair. But you were naked and vulnerable, fragile and exposed. Listen to me very carefully. Don't kid yourself. When God is beginning to clean you up and God is speaking his word into your life and you're beginning to grow, even he acknowledges that there's still some vulnerabilities. All right? It happened in Genesis and it looks like it is happening here again. This child, this woman is growing into beauty, but at the end of the day, there was still some vulnerabilities. Okay? So verse four, eight, eight, verse 8 says, I came by again and saw you saw that you were ready for love and a lover. I thank God that he keeps coming by 
I thank God that God keeps stopping by in your life. I thank God that as you are growing in the things of God, he keeps stopping by and he sees you as his lover. Because God is love. Hallelujah. I took care of you, dressed you, and protected you. I promised you my love and entered the covenant of marriage with you. God wants a covenant of marriage with you. He has entered into a covenant with you. He sees you as his bride. That is how he saw the nation of Israel. He said, these guys are my wife. These guys are my lovers. I mean, I can just see God getting so excited about these people. He said, I, God, the master, gave my word. You became mine. I gave you a good bath washing off all that old blood and anointed you with aromatic oils. God is pretty romantic. He knows how to make it right. And that was what he was doing, okay? He had taken this person who was vulnerable as an infant, had helped that child grow, that baby grow, and now he's coming back to add oils and ingredients to the welfare of this, ba of this, of this former baby. He says, I dress you in a colorful gown, and put leather sandals on your feet. I gave you linen blouses and a fashionable wardrobe of expensive clothing. I adorned you with jewelry. I placed bracelet on your wrist, fitted you out with a necklace, emerald ring, sapphire earrings, and a diamond tiara. Hallelujah. I mean, God really decked out this person. You know, I sit here and I say this, that God has been good to me. God has really been good to me, all right? Uh, I don't have to look very far to see how worse it could be. But God has been good to me. At least I have change of clothes. I have watch to wear. I don't even know how many of these watches what to do anymore. You know, I, 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 I have food to eat. God has been good in some way or the other. God has been good. God has been good, all right? Now he goes on to say, you were provided with everything precious and beautiful, with exquisite clothes and elegant food garnished with honey and oil you were absolutely stunning ah 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 you were absolutely stunning you were a queen you became world famous a legendary beauty brought to perfection by other men's decree of god the master this person was at the pinnacle remember what i said man was made out of dust and then you keep rising, 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 and then you hit a pinnacle. If you are not careful and you don't take, you are not careful and you let vulnerability set in, okay, you are going to go someday down. You have to be very careful in life. Well, this woman went from being vulnerable as a baby to now she is a queen, world famous, a legendary beauty brought to perfection by ornaments, decree of God the master. 15. This is the sad part. You ready? But your beauty went to your head and you became a common whore. Grabbing anyone coming down the street and taking him into your bed, you took your fine dresses and made tents of them, using them as brothels in which, your practice, in which you practice your trade. This kind of thing should never happen. Never. What a sick soul. And uh, when I was reading this scripture, right, and I was thinking about it, I was like, man, God must have really had a broken heart. You see, uh, uh, sin crept in, iniquity crept in, transgression crept in somewhere so that Our Lady, who had become the queen, began to basically go down. Now, God is bringing this narrative to our attention because it happens. It happens. Do you honestly not know any single believer in the world since you became born again who has not maybe lost their ways? These things happen, okay? All I'm saying is do not allow yourself to get to the place where you feel like you don't need God. Where you feel like you don't need God because the moment sin creeps in, if you're not careful, you will begin to do things which are contrary to what you did on your way up. Be very careful. These things are warnings. Okay, so now, remember all that jewelry that God gave this lady so that she become a queen? When sin crept in and beauty got into, 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 into her head, she began to use those very ornaments that God had given her for different purposes. So here we go. 
17. And then you took all that fine jewelry I gave you, my gold and my silver, and made, unfortunately, pornographic images of them for your brothels. You decorated your beds with fashionable silks and cottons and perfumed them with my aromatic oils and incense. And then you set out the wonderful foods I provided, the fresh breads and the fruits with fine herbs and spices, which were my gifts to you. And you served them as delicacies in your whorehouses. That's what happened, says God the master. So you see, everything that God had provided now was being used for ulterior purposes. So God begins to bless you. God begins to do some amazing things in your life. And the very first things that he brought to you, if you're not careful, you begin to use it for other things. Listen, may you use the giftings and the talents and the callings that God has given you continually to serve him. Listen, there are those moments when we commit sin, but may that sin over time not become a lifestyle. Please, may it not become a lifestyle. No matter what, just kind of navigate and find God so that God can help you basically succeed. All right? Now, 2020. And then you took your sons and your daughters, whom you had given birth to as my children, and you killed them, sacrificing them to idols. Wasn't it bad enough that you had become a war? And now you're a murderer killing my children and sacrificing them to idols. I mean, this thing is going from good, from, from this thing went from bad to amazing, from amazing to it went from to bad, and now this thing is really getting worse. Now, let's look at verse 22. He says, Not once during these years of outrageous obscenities and worry did you remember your infancy. Israel had forgotten where they began from. It's happened to the best of us, including me. Where, you know, you think about where maybe you were when you first got born again and how excited and how desperate you were for God. And then over the years, God becomes good to you. And if you don't take care, you just, you just forget. So 22 says, did you remember your infancy? They forgot their infancy. Not once during those years did you forget, remember your infancy. When you were naked and exposed, blood smeared. Okay, let's keep going here. And then to top off all, excuse me. Uh, yeah, blood smeared, verse 22. And then verse 23. And then to top off all your evil acts, you built your bold brothels in every town square. Doom, doom to you, says God, the master. At every major intersection, you built your old brothels and exposed your sluttish sex, spreading your legs for everyone who passed by. There was an exposure here. Very graphic. 25. And then you went international with your whoring. You fornicated with the Egyptians, seeking them out in their sex orgies. The more promiscuous you became, the angrier I got. Finally, I intervened, reduced your borders, and turned you over to the rapacity of your enemies. Even the Philistine women, can you believe it, were shocked at your sluttish life. It's, it's sad because this is the nation, chosen nation of what Israel. And over time, something got into their head. And they began to go down. Uh, what I'm trying to say here is this, you know, may we may we be careful in our walk with God. For the Bible says that he that thinketh that he standeth should take heed lest he falls. Please, we are in the last days. You know, let me let me let me let me put it, let me let me put it this way to you. The Bible says the Philistines were shocked. The Philistines were shocked. When you look at what is going on in society right now, sometimes aren't you shocked? I mean, if you're in the U.S., it's almost like every weekend there's some kind of perversion. There's some shooting or there's something. There's something going on. And you look around and you say to yourself, oh, my God, how did we get here? What is happening? Maybe you look at your life and you say to yourself, how did I get here? You have those moments. You have those moments. It's because maybe something got to your head. Hallelujah. Let's believe God to help us to overcome some of these things that happen. It is just life. If God didn't want us to know that these things don't happen in life, he probably wouldn't have included it in the Bible. But he did so that we understand that these things happen and he wants us to do everything we can to make sure that we stay on track. Hallelujah. So, Bible says in verse 28, now this thing is becoming very, very, very broadened. It's becoming a 
tell all news. The Philistines, okay, international people are hearing about this problem with Israel now. The Bible says in verse 28, you went on to fornicate with the, what? the Assyrians. Your appetite was insatiable, but still you weren't satisfied. You took on the Babylonians, a country of businessmen, and still you weren't satisfied. Now the sin of Israel had gone from the Philistines to the Assyrians to the Babylonians. I want you to think about a map. Okay, if you're in Israel, you're in the Middle East right there, you're in Jerusalem, then all of a sudden, okay, the, the, the Philistines were the people that were surrounding. Then all of a sudden, it went from the Philistines and the Bible said it went to the Assyrians who were already in the northern part of the, of the geographic location. Then from the Assyrians, it went all the way to Babylon, which was in the far, far east. As you can see, when it got to the head of Israel, okay, it couldn't control it and all of a sudden, the thing was expanding. Please listen to me. Do not let iniquity, do not let sin, transgression, and the effect of it begin to what? Spread to a place where you can't contain it anymore. It happens to the best of us. I've had my fair share. And I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm praying that in the name of Jesus, when the conviction of the Holy Ghost comes and he says, you know what, it's child, come back. You are able to basically reckon your position and say, God, I am running to you. Maybe you find yourself in a position where you're like, I never thought I would see myself here again. I never thought I would see myself doing this thing again. What in the world am I doing here? You know what? There is hope for the future. Hallelujah. Let's keep going. Verse 31, God says, what a sick soul doing all this stuff. Do you sometimes sit back and you say, man, I must really be jacked up. <laughs> what a sick soul doing all this stuff. The champion whore, you built your bold brothels at every major intersection, opened up your whole house in every neighborhood, but you were different from regular whores in that you wouldn't accept the fee. Wives who are unfaithful to their husbands accept gifts from their lovers, and men commonly pay their whores. But you pay your lovers. You bribe men from all over to come to bed with you. You're just the opposite of the regular whores who get paid for sex. Instead, you pay men for their favors. You even prefer order. This thing, this thing is, this thing is serious. Okay, this thing is very, 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 very serious. And and Israel went on and on and on and on. But at some point, there had to be. There had to be, a repentance. What I did was I painted to you a picture of a nation that began well, and over time things had gone bad. It happens, but there's hope for the future. Now, you guys know about how the Bible says, you know what, there was a nation to the north called Samaria, and Samaria got involved in idol worship. And then, of course, there's also a nation to the south, which in those cases was Sodom. Everybody knows the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, let's go to verse 46, and I want to read something. The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 46, watch. Your older sister is Samaria. She lived to the north of you with her daughters. And if you know Samaria, okay, what happened was they got into idol worship. At one point, one of the kings brought idols into Samaria and, you know, the northern kingdom broke off from Jerusalem and they began idol worship. That's what happened in Samaria. And then the Bible says, your younger sister is Sodom. You know the story of Sodom. Who lived to the south of you with her daughters? Haven't you lived just like they did? So in essence, God is saying, Jerusalem, how did you get here? Haven't you engaged in outrageous obscenities just like they did? In fact, it didn't take you long to catch up and pass them. As sure as I am, the living God, decree God, the master, your sister Sodom and her daughters never even came close to what you and your daughters have done. Listen. I've always had a soft spot for Jerusalem because, you know, that is the city of God. But then there was such perversion that even God himself is saying, man, these guys are doing worse things than even what the Sodomites people did and what even the people of Samaria did. It can happen. The sin of the sister Sodom was this. She lived with her daughters in the lap of luxury, proud, gluttonous, and lazy. They ignored the oppressed and the poor. They put on airs and lived obscene lives. And you know what happened? I did away with them. 
and Samaria. <laughs> Samaria didn't sin half has sin half as much as you. You've committed far more obscenities than she ever did. Why? You make your two sisters look good in comparison with what you have done. How did Izzo drop to this level? How did it come to this? It was because something got into their head. Child of the living God. It takes time to know God. And if you got born again, it will probably take a long time. It will take years before you maybe move on to eternity. It's a journey. But I pray that in the name of Jesus, when you begin to see that things are deteriorating or God brings to your mind that something is deteriorating, that you will reckon your position and say, God, I ask you for what? Forgiveness. This thing is not going too well. Hallelujah. All right, let's keep going. Um, I believe I'm in verse, uh, uh, verse, verse 52 there. He says, face it. Okay, face it, 52. Face it, your sisters look mighty good compared with you because you've outsinned them so completely. You've actually made them look righteous. Aren't you ashamed? But you're going to have to live with it. What a reputation to carry into history. Outsinning your two sisters. Boy, there's got to be some repentance coming in here very soon. Now, this is what I love about God. This is what I love about God. In Romans chapter 8, Paul said, Nothing shall separate me from the love of God. No principalities or powers. God is love and he's an amazing lover. I love what the Bible does in verse 53. The Bible says, But I am going to reverse their fortunes. The fortunes of Sodom and her daughters and the fortunes of Samaria and her daughters. And, get this, your fortunes right along with them. I'm telling you, the greatest gift, the greatest blessing in this world is forgiveness. I'm beginning to understand that true love is able to handle contradictions. True love is able to handle contradictions. The baby was naked. Its umbilical cord was not cut. And it was still laying in its own blood. God comes in, cleans it up, salts it, and gives it diadems and all these jewels and makes it into a woman which is fully developed. And now that woman goes and does everything that defiles the living God. But somewhere, somehow, God still in his infinite wisdom says, contradictory to all opinions, he says, you know what? I'll reverse their fortunes. I'll reverse their fortunes. And get this, your fortunes right along with them. Still, you're going to have to live with your shame. And by facing and accepting your shame, you're going to provide some comfort to your two sisters. Your sister Sodom with her daughters and Samir with her daughters will become what they were before. And you will become what you were before. God is saying, you know what? I'll restore unto you what the canker worm has eaten and what the locusts have stolen. Remember the days when you were putting on airs, acting so high and mighty, looking down on Sister Sodom. That was before your evil ways were exposed. I've always said this in church. Before you judge people, and before you are out there telling everybody about the mistakes they're doing, be very careful. Because you just haven't been exposed. Remember? Remember what the Bible says here. Okay, I'm reading from verse probably 57 here. Remember the days when you were putting on airs, acting so high and mighty, looking down on Sister Sodom. That was before your evil ways were exposed. Be careful. Listen, I've been preaching for some weeks now about sin, iniquity, transgression. That don't do it. But if somebody does find themselves in it, be very careful before yourself is exposed. And now, you're the butt of what? Contempt, despised by the Edomite woman, the Philistine woman, and everybody else around you. But you have to face it to accept the shame of your obscene and vile life. Decreed the master. 
59. God, the master says, I'll do to you just as you have already done. You who have treated my oath with contempt and broken the covenant. All the same. 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 I remember the covenant I made with you when you were young, and I will make a new covenant with you that will last forever. You remember your sorry past and be properly contrite when you receive back your sisters, both the older and the younger. I'll give them to you as daughters, but not as participants in your covenant. I'll firmly establish my covenant with you, and you know that I am God. You remember your past life and face the shame of it. But when I make my atonement for you, 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 making everything right after all you've done, it will leave you what? Speechless decree of God, the master. What a love story. What a love story. It went from serious dire situation as an infant to their glory and then it went down but when we were down Jesus still picked up his bride may God pick you up may God pick you up nothing shall separate us from the love of God may God pick you up may God pick you up just like he did in Ezekiel chapter 16 may this be your portion I don't care what you've done whatever you think you've done the forgiveness of God outlasts everything it really does just trust God okay just trust God that as you avoid sin whether it's intentional or unintentional as you avoid sin and iniquity and transgression in your life okay you remain strong you remain humble and let God do what he wants to do in your life hallelujah 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 you serve a good God you still bear his image he wants to do something mighty in your life please do not let the devil steal all your joy just reckon your position with God and let him be good so that he can actually do something amazing with your life somebody say amen well listen time is far spent and um, I want to go ahead and just pray with some people right now I'll pray with you if you need to get saved if you need to get born again don't give up on your faith he is a God who has an everlasting covenant with you and I believe that he will use you for exploits he will do exploits with you if you come back with a contrite and a broken spirit and a contrite heart to this the Bible says he will draw nigh somebody say amen so why don't we pray father in the name of Jesus I'm looking through this camera right now somebody listening to me they maybe remember the days when they began and where they reached the pinnacle but they find themselves in very dire circumstances I pray oh God it's because of sin. It's because of iniquity. It's because of trump come of transgression. Lord, please forgive them. Let there be an atonement. May they feel your love which coming so deep wherever they are that Heavenly Father, they will really, literally run back to you because you are that creator. So we thank you, O God, that we are born again. We give our hearts to you. We give our spirits to you. We give our soul to you. Heavenly Father, we repent and we say, God, be with us. And may we enjoy of that blessings of forgiveness. We thank you in Jesus' name. And somebody shall say amen. So we are done. I will see you on Sunday morning. You are going to be blessed. God is going to continue to show us some more things about sin, iniquity, and transgressions that we can avoid. And his spirit is always going to quicken us. So we'll see you Sunday, 10 a.m. Sunday, 7 p.m. Friday, 8 p.m. for prayer. And of course, you know, Wednesdays at 7, we do this. So. Always join us. We love you and may the grace of God be with you. Amen.